here at the Coolidge Historic Museum and we're going to have a very special next stop where we get to go all around the museum and hear so much history about our wonderful town of Coolidge. So come with me and we'll explore. Hi everyone, we're here at the Coolidge Historic Museum and I'm here with Wendy. Thanks for having us today. Well, thank you for coming. I'm happy to show you our museum. For you that don't know, this was the original courthouse and jail in Coolidge. Coolidge was founded in 1925, and everything in it is at least 50 years old, with very few exceptions. Great. Come on in and <laughs> see our museum. So the main part of the museum is in the back, but this is just a little starter. Uh, there is a map on the wall that shows the original plot, which just goes from the boulevard to the railroad tracks from Northern to Coolidge Avenue. So, so the, of course, this was the, the courthouse. And come back here and uh, you can see the original jail. As you go by, there's pictures of the Joneses. They're the ones that plotted the town bought the property and plotted it. But back here is the jail. And there is a funny story that goes with it. There was a marshal that rode on horseback and these are his weapons. His family was nice enough to donate them to us. Um, but he, if he had prisoners, he would handcuff them around a tree. And one uh, morning, he had quite a few that had partied the night before. But there was a boxcar sitting on the railroad track. So he decided to just lock him up in the boxcar, went home, had lunch, came back, and the boxcar was gone. Oh, no. <laughs> so the town decided they needed a jail. So this is it. It's made out of parts from um, farmers, their plows, and different things. We do not know why there's an upstairs. If it was for overflow, the, the door is very narrow. We have had people come through that said they have spent some time in here, but none <laughs> of them know what's huh. why the upstairs. is a room dedicated to uh, the schools and scouting. Back. There is a picture of the very first school. I don't know if you can get a shot of it or not. Now, I said everything was at least 50 years older. They, some of the yearbooks are not, but when we get a chance to get one, yeah. we get it. Of course. And everybody loves to come in and try to find a picture of mom and dad and grandma. Uh -huh. So we still have some that we don't have, but... Uh, oh, we have uniform. Yes. How cute. Yeah. Yes. The map on the wall doesn't have uh, freeways. It was before. We put in the freeways. This is what the kitchens were like in the 30s. Uh, the electric refrigerators had just come out. And this was one of the very first models. And the washing machine with a ringer. This whole section goes to music. KCKY was a radio station here and um, a lot of fa famous people your parents would know, Waylon Jennings and uh, some of the others that grew up here got their start down at the Gallatin Goose. Mm -hmm. Dwayne Eddy. But this is a Victrola which is a record player vinyl for the younger generation, before there was electricity. Mm -hmm. 
This is the volume control. Yes. In Coolidge and around Yes, the area. They, are, they are all from yes, this area. Uh -huh. Everything represents oh. Coolidge. How neat. Then back here is the newspaper section, uh, the printer, where every letter had to be put in by hand, was first at the ruins and then later at the Coolidge examiners. And we do have a display of very old typewriters. And then, of course, some of the farm equipment. A little bit on our Native Americans. These baskets came out of the Vaki Inn when it was a hotel or an inn. Here we have our medical, and the doctor's bag was from a Coolidge doctor, and all the equipment is either from Coolidge or Florence. Mm. Um, most of it came out of the Coolidge clinic. This had to do with the department store. When I moved here in the 70s, there were three department stores. And uh, Cohen's, which was across from the post office, was the best known, and this was mainly things for it. Of course, everybody had to sew their own things. In fact, during World War I, where the farmers needed Levi's. They only came once a month. And this was the lineup in front of Cohen's apartment store to get Levi's. <laughs> wow, that is very cool. Then we have our military. These were all uniforms worn by Coolidge people. The one on the left is from World War One. Most of them are from World War II. Now if you'd like to come out back, we have a farmhouse that doesn't have running water or electricity, which people can't understand how anybody <laughs> lived that way. Uh -huh. So come on back. Lions Club was nice enough to donate this ramp. Oh, wow. It, uh, it's pretty well self-explanatory. This, of course, was the living room dining area. Then if you come back here, it's the bedroom and everybody slept in the same room. Uh -huh. The quilts, even the mattress on the beds were made in Coolidge. So we got really, one lady came through and she got all excited because she knew her dad had made that mattress. Aw, that is so sweet. Here's the kitchen with an ice box and oh, for the, uh -huh. But there's no electricity, no running water. The tin can lids are to cover up the knot holes so that the bugs can't get in the house. And since they had to be very, they had to use everything they had. So, yeah. tin can lids was the best option. It works. <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed our museum and that you come and see us. We aren't open right now. We will be open in a few months, hopefully. I'm not sure when this is going to air, but we'll always be willing to give somebody a tour. The phone number is 
520-560-8300. And we'll be happy to give you a tour. Well, thank you so much, Wendy, for having us. Yes. It's all so wonderful. And I hope everyone will come and check out the museum. I do too.